Liz, what's the first thing you learned in Engineering 101? <laughs> okay, Murphy's Law. <laughs> Murphy's Law is anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And there are a couple of corollaries to Murphy's Law. The first is, if a part can be installed backwards, it will be. Second, your maintenance man will use the most fragile fitting as a fulcrum for his pry bar. <laughs> and the third thing is, Murphy was an optimist. <laughs> but I have good news for you. Murphy's Law does not apply to this club. Because last week, Monday morning last week, I had a phone call from Sizzlers. Hey, we're going to be closed for remodeling for a couple of months. Any lesser club would have canceled out the meeting. But I called Lindsay. Lindsay said, hell no way. We're going to have a meeting. And so we, she canvassed a few of our members. We had several volunteers to host meetings at their homes. We had a very well attended and well run meeting at Dick Arms' home. Dick, thank you very much for hosting our club again. Where are you? Dick, thank you, Dick. So. It worked out. We did not cancel our meeting. We had a very, very well-run meeting, very well-organized, very well-attended. So Murphy's Law does not apply to Club 122. And what makes, one of the things that makes 122 really great is we are a very diverse club. And let me tell you a little bit about my Toastmasters experience. My first club was Gilbert Toastmasters in Reading, Pennsylvania. It was a company-run club by Gilbert Associates, an engineering construction company. And I was invited to join by my boss because I had a stammer. You remember the King's speech? Yes. Not quite as bad as the King, but almost as bad. And I was at a point where I had to give techno technical presentations. And so my boss suggested that I join the corporate club. And I was the poster boy for being a fearful speaker. But being able to join a club where I was able to talk shop with male Republican Caucasian engineers was almost as comforting as hugging a teddy bear. <laughs> so I stayed with that club for about a year or so and really got more comfortable with speaking. And then I went to another club, a general club very much like this club, Reading Toastmasters, Reading, Pennsylvania. Club number 714, another three-digit club, chartered in 1949. And very similar, we had a two-hour dinner meeting at a local hotel. Very well attended. Usually we had about 25 people showing up, 25 to 30 people. And again, a very diverse group of members where I found out that I really enjoyed speaking in public, which was a real eye-opener for me. After I moved out of Pennsylvania, I joined Parker Toastmasters in Colorado, Parker, Colorado. And that was a struggling club. We, it was a, not really a very strong club. A lot of times we had uh, seven or eight people at a meeting, but you learn to be adaptive when you are working with a club that small. And finally, I found my home here with Albuquerque Toastmasters, a very diverse group of people, very in warm, encouraging, and a well-run club, very well-run. Now, let me tell you a little bit about one of my guilty pleasures. How many of you have guilty pleasures, things you would never want your boss, your wife, for? OK. One of my guilty pleasures is watching Walt Disney's classic movie, Fantasia, which introduced a lot of people to classical music. And the segment of Fantasia that I love best is The Sorcerer's Apprentice, where Mickey Mouse plays the role of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And the sorcerer is turning in after a hard day's work. He takes off his hat, goes to bed, and Mickey knows that the magic is stored inside his hat. So Mickey comes and puts the hat on and starts conjuring. And Mickey conjures up, and he gets into a whole lot of trouble. A whole lot of trouble. And the sorcerer wakes up, comes down from the bedroom, sees what Mickey is doing, picks up the hat, and brings everything back under control. And he's going to punish Mickey. So he takes his little broom and swats Mickey on the butt. But when he's doing that, 
the sorcerer has a little bit of a smile on his face because he realizes that Mickey has tasted what it's like to be a sorcerer, to have the power to be able to conjure up and make things happen. And so Mickey, and so the sorcerer is really happy that Mickey has tasted the power and that he's able to appreciate what he can grow into. And this club is very much like that. We have a whole bunch of master sorcerers here in this club and a lot of apprentices. And the masters are very good at working with the apprentices and helping them to progress, to develop their speaking skills and to progress from being an apprentice to being a master. And finally, I want to thank all of you for not tapping away on your iPhones for paying attention to me. <laughs> but now you can take out your iPhones and make a note on your calendar because I have a very special announcement to make. On January 27th, 2015, we will be celebrating meeting number 4,000. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much.